and thank you for joining us today. Um, look, a pretty damning report. First of all, your view on, on, on what that report has discovered. Well, I think clearly in that report, they've raised a number of very serious, extremely serious concerns um, and that clearly what happened, which the investigators have observed for us, was unacceptable. That's why we've spent the last six weeks taking a number of steps, both in relation to um, the issues at Regina Road, but also looking more broadly. That's why the next steps that we want to take, there's a whole series of steps that we want to take in the short term. But clearly there's massive change that needs to happen to our housing service. And that's why there's a broader uh, a range of work that needs to happen to make sure that from our council residents' point of view, they have a much more improved experience. One of the most concerning things for me in uh, the testimony that we've heard from some of the residents and in that report is that we just weren't listening to residents. We weren't listening to our own council residents and not responsive to them. I want a housing service which is responsive, which acts timely and importantly, crucially, treats our tenants with the dignity and the respect that they deserve. You say there what stood out for you. I mean, the one thing that came up time and time again in the report was a kind of culture of stigmatising, that's the word that was used, stigmatising residents, not listening, seeing them as difficult. I mean, that for me was what stood out. It, for you, how do you change that culture uh, tomorrow? If you're, you're in Regina Road or you're in another part of your uh, housing system, what's going to change today, tomorrow, that they're not treated like that again? Well, I think um, that that report, I think, as you say, that is one of the most uh, starkest things in the report. And I think we can as of tomorrow be treating our council residents with that dignity and respect but one of the things that I think is really important to achieve that change on the on the more longer term basis is about working with our council residents in how we improve things so I want our council residents to be shaping what it is we do next I want them to be judging how well we're doing it I want them to be telling us what their ideas are and their suggestions are because they have the lived experience of our service and they can bring that to bear in terms of challenging us and telling us whether we're making those improvements or not one thing the report says is that, that no one takes responsibility. It's six, seven weeks on from our report. Has anyone resigned? Has anyone been sacked? Has anyone been replaced? So one of the things that, uh, one of the steps that we've taken is this week um, appointing um, a chief lead housing officer within the council to help us give us the capacity and the expertise to bring some of this um, forward and I'm very clear that if there are accountabilities to be had on an individual level I my expectation is that that will be followed up and that will um, that, that will be addressed so people will lose their jobs I don't know that for sure, but I think what's important is that any lines of inquiry, if there are individual accountabilities to be had, um, those must be answered. I'm very clear that there is no space in our council for members of staff who do not treat our tenants and our council residents with the respect that they deserve. We have many, many talented, dedicated, hardworking staff within the council, but I am very clear that that is the expectation that we will, we will be setting. There are two issues, isn't there? issues here, isn't there? One is the accountability issue. How can you say we're being held to account if no one is suffering the consequences of what's happened? If people aren't losing their jobs, if people aren't being replaced, how can you say we're being held to account if nothing and no one is changing their position? Well, I think the investigation from the investigators was a first step. That was a, a fact-finding um, investigation to see what happened. I think what we need to do now is to look and follow that up and see if there are accountabilities to be had. So there is, there is scope to be able to absolutely to look at that. But, but I think the, in but, terms of... But, but can the culture change if the personnel doesn't change? But I think we don't know the answer to that. So I think that is that has to that has that process has to run its course, um, and that's just one part of this. I think the broader part is about working with our council residents, you know, coming together as a council to address the improvement that we absolutely need to see. Our housing housing service absolutely needs to change. Have you considered your position over this? When I became council leader six months ago, this council couldn't balance its budget. And six months on, we have set a balanced budget. And I want to bring the rigour, the energy um, and the commitment that I took alongside the administration to set that balanced budget to resolving our housing service and bringing that much needed improvement and culture change that we need to that we need to see. I'm absolutely resolved to doing that and I think we can. I want our council housing service to be the best council housing service in London. We've got to have that aspiration in order to make sure that we can see that change that we want to see. But as the council leader, do you take full responsibility for what has happened? I think in that report, I think we saw that 
as, as they highlighted, four years from when that leak was first reported. So this didn't, and, and the issues that I think it, it, it reflects more systematically in our housing service, didn't arrive and didn't arise in the last six months. They've been with us for some years. And so similarly, I think I want to bring that energy that I've brought to improving the council in other respects to our housing service. We weren't, and it's shocking that our council residents came to you to present those cases to us rather than coming to us. That shows the well, they did change come to we've you. got. They did come to indeed, you. Indeed, indeed. We've ignored them. Yes, and yes, time absolutely, again. absolutely. And that, that's what I want to change. They came to us out of desperation. Yes, I, I absolutely because acknowledge that. You weren't listening that. to them. Yes, absolutely. And that's what we've got to change. That's absolutely. So I want to bring that energy that we've taken to other forms of improvement across the council to changing our housing service for our residents. But who is taking responsibility here? I spoke to Franzoy earlier and she says, look, how can anything change if no one takes responsibility? I asked you a very straight question a moment ago. Do you take responsibility? You haven't said either way if you have. No individual seemed to be taking responsibility for what has happened here. I think the report said that there was no one reason why this happened. It was a whole collection of things. And one of those was around um, our staff capacity, our staff being very stretched, some competence issues that were raised. We absolutely have to follow those up. This investigation isn't the end of this. We need to take this forward and follow that through to its, through its, through its course. I take responsibility as the council leader, ultimate responsibility for what the council does. And my response is to making sure that we change this. And if that means there needs to be changes on a personnel level, that's what officers will have to do. And that my expectation is that council Council officers will follow those accountability lines through to their appropriate conclusion. We went to Regina Road this morning. Opposite the block where Franzo and Leroy were living, we found a family living in a flat where mushrooms are growing out of their kitchen wall. They have had damp and leaks for two years. They have complained continuously to the council. This was today. Nothing has changed in seven weeks for that man at all. It's still happening. And I think given the situation that we're looking at, I'm aware that there will be cases that we may not be aware of. We have spoken to residents in Regina Block. We have spoken across the three blocks. Our resident involvement teams have been knocking on doors trying to speak have to they? people. They because, have indeed. But, well, so, we have written, so why haven't they caught this uh, case? Why is this case being ignored? It's on the same road. We have written to 1,200 residents in similar accommodation, encouraging people to come forward. And I would say if there are residents out there, and I would want to see the case that you have found, um, who are concerned about their housing conditions, I want to know about it so we can respond. I think the scale of what we've seen in the report means that there will, I'm aware, be cases that we may not be aware of. We are not going to be able to solve this overnight, but there are things that we are doing right now. There are things that we are about to start doing. There are things that will take a bit more time. Um, but I absolutely want to be able to change this so that residents like our council resident are not living in those conditions any longer. To be absolutely clear here, you're not going to resign. We haven't seen any sign of anyone else resigning. We've seen no sign of anyone being sacked, anyone losing their jobs. The fact is no one's taking responsibility in your council for what's happened here. I don't accept that at all. As council leader, I have commissioned this report. We have got that back in good time. We have a, a, um, a clear action plan about how we're going to respond to all of those recommendations. We haven't seen the end of or the conclusion of what happens to this. If there are lines of accountability on an individual level that need to be followed, my full expectation as council leader is that that will be followed. But in order to move forward, we need to be able to address those recommendations. And crucially, from my point of view, I want us to stop this culture of not listening to our residents. I want them to be part how of can our you stop that culture with the same people in charge well uh, m i am a new council leader in the last six months these issues had we were not aware of them they did not arise they didn't start in the last six months so i think i bring new leadership to that i'm in the process of appointing a senior lead housing officer who hasn't been part of all of this who will come in in order to start the, that process and galvanize us as a council to be able to respond to that improvement so there will be new leadership to be able to address where we need to go so that we can change our housing service for the better.